I'm back and welcome to my February to be read pile. I am planning to read a bunch of stuff in February but I'm also really worried that my mood is going to hijack all of the things that I've got planned but I'm going to show you what I want to read anyway and then we'll see where the month takes me. So the first book that I am going to prioritize in the month of February is Heart Song by TJ Klune which is the third installment in his Green Creek series which is an urban fantasy male male romance about werewolves and I love every installment so far with Wolf Song and Raven Song. So Heart Song coming out in February has me so excited but also nervous because I haven't reread Raven Song yet. So I think Raven Song is going to be on my to be read pile before Heart Song, depending on how I go at the end of January, which is when I'm filming this. Ultimately, I love these books. They're very quick to read and I just adore them with all my heart. Then I have set myself a challenge and that is A Day of Fall and Night by Samantha Shannon, which is a fantasy standalone, the chonkiest book I think I own currently that I haven't read. I've tried reading this and I found it a bit difficult to get into so I'm going to go through it this is my challenge I'm going to go through it and at least the first parts of it just sticky tab where all the chapters are and then I can see what is laying ahead of me I guess in order for my reading to progress so I'll try those sticky tab methods and I'll see how I go at reading a couple of chapters and then I'll revisit how I'm feeling about it and see if I am getting into it because I do also have this as an audiobook but starting the audiobook there's just so much world building and time displacement that it kind of confused me and I couldn't latch onto people's names so I think if I start this physically it's going to give me a little bit of an edge maybe I can switch over to the audiobook we'll see what happens but ultimately just trying to get my plan happening for this book is something that I need to do in February otherwise I'm going to end up forgetting about it and ignoring it and I don't want to ignore it again for another year and then speaking of ignoring I have been ignoring the Dresden Files series for much too long and in January I actually finally started them so I read the first well I reread the first two books so I've got Grave Peril on my to be read pile for February and in this one According to the back, the spirit world has gone loco. So we follow Harry Dresden, who is a wizard detective. He can see into what is called the Never Never, which is like the third eye or the sight. But when you see into the Never Never, it's kind of imprinted on your soul and you can't ever forget what you see. So he uses this ability very sparingly. But I think he's got to use it a little bit more in this book. So the stakes are high. Everything is dire. People are dying and he's trying to get to the bottom of it as usual. The first two books were fantastic with a dark wizard that Harry had to track down. And then also in the second book there were werewolves that he had to work out why killings were happening so I really like this engaging and rapidly unfurling world and I've been doing spoiler chats with Dave who also has read up to a certain point in Dresden so I'm really enjoying revisiting everything in my reread and I hope that I can continue doing that in February because I realized if I reread one book per month I wouldn't be able to get through all of them because there's more than 15 to 18 books currently out in the series and if I want to reread all of them and then start the new ones I can't do that in 12 months so maybe I'll do this one and the sequel I think Summer Night which has Faye in it. I've got a lot of lofty plans but the audiobooks for these aren't very long so they're easier for me to get through that way. So Grave Peril and potentially the sequel Summer Night is on my February TBR. What is also on my February TBR plans might get changed around because of my library holds. So I do have Wool by Hugh Howey on this list, which is a dystopian book about people living in silos underground because above ground is too risky to live upon. Again, that's all I know about this one because a dystopian book, I don't really need to know too much about it. I'm like, oh, how good's the writing? Is it a decent hook? I'll give it a try. So I've borrowed the audiobook, but it's 17 hours long, which is a big one so I'm like can I put this off instead if something else comes up that's shorter we'll see I also have Millie Bobby Brown's 19 steps I think it's called it's a memoir by her she was in Stranger Things she played 11 so I'm like oh I'll give this a try it's nine hours long much shorter than that 17 hour behemoth of wool but depending on which one comes up first I'm obviously going to click borrow so I've got those happening for me as well and then in addition to those audiobooks and the bigger reading plans for the chunkier books on my list I've got the Atlas Complex. Now I did a recap of the first two books which is posted on my channel and I'm like I reread those two books I've done the hard work now it's time to finish off a series but it just takes me a while to physically read so I'm trying to get through things as fast as I can but with a long commute to and from work it really eats time out of my day so trying to get to this one in February is the priority here because finishing a series would just be awesome so early in 2024. This one is an urban fantasy series and it's a dark academia book where Atlas 
is the caretaker of this secret Alexandrian society and he invites six initiates in the first book to come and study their specialties at this university. They are all magic users called Medeans and while they come to this secret society slash university they do not initially realize that there is a cost to being there and you know it's a dark academia book of course there is going to be a catch and I liked the dark morality of the characters and how power twists them and what they would do to keep it. It's a really interesting mediation on people's psyches and how far they would go and how they'd band together in different ways and how they let people down in different ways and I like seeing their different magics come into play as well but this one is going to hopefully be an epic conclusion. I'm really nervous about it because the last book in any series is always got to be epic. I was also going to put Silver Under Nightfall on my to be read pile as well for the month but I think because the sequel to this comes out in April it might be too early for me to listen to the audiobook as a reread so I don't know if this is a bit premature but I might just want to reread it anyway. I have a whole review for it if you want more information but it's essentially vampires trying to slay these monsters that are infected with the rot so they're almost like zombie vampires. Very powerful, very hard to kill. Remy the main character is a vampire hunter Hunter and he has to team up with this married couple who are also vampire court nobles. So I just love the tension, the dynamic and the steaminess in this book. It is fantastic. I've reread it twice already. I'm probably going to read it again before the sequel comes out in April. If you missed it, I talked about this in my anticipated releases video, but I'm just so, so hyped about this because oh, I just love this so much. But anyway, I think it's clear that I might end up rereading it. <laughs> and then I just saw this one on my shelf and that is Oathbringer. So I'm going to hold it up as a stand-in for the other books in the series but I might end up reading or beginning my reread of The Way of Kings which is the first book because the fifth book in this Stormlight series comes out in December but because these are over a thousand pages each they're going to take me a little while and I really don't like the audiobooks. They feel boring to me because I don't love the narrators so I need to read them physically which limits my time on being able to read them and they're, look they're so long but they're so good and I think I can reread them before December. Like honestly I should be able to, right? This is a stand-in. Will it happen in February? I don't know. I roughly had it on my plan for March but depending on how I go with everything else I would like to at least maybe start The Way of Kings. I think I'm being a bit too ambitious. My mood reading is really sending me over a cliff of like just pick up everything, everything at once, read all of it and it doesn't, it doesn't really work like that but at least because it's the beginning of a year I'm motivated and not in a reading slump so I guess I'll just take it. But there you go that is most of my February TBR. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know how many books you plan to read in February because I always go overboard at the beginning of a year but thank you again so much for watching. I'll chat to you below in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!